In this video, we shall explore how important treatment decisions are made by specialists looking after the patient and the patient journey from the start of the consultation once all workup is complete. So let's get into it. So here's a cartoon of the organs in the upper abdomen, the liver, stomach, pancreas and the bile tube and gallbladder. And at the bottom end of the bile tube is the pancreatic tumor that I've drawn. The common symptoms are pain, jaundice, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, steatoria, weight loss and pancreatitis. Pancreatic cancer is a nasty disease. It's the leading cause of cancer death worldwide. Only 1 in 10 or 2 out of 10 patients will receive life-saving surgery and patients have symptoms for months before they are diagnosed. Typically, investigations for diagnosis include scans such as ultrasound, CT, MRI or CT PET scan, endoscopy such as endoscopic ultrasound or ERCP. So once these are complete, then the patient moves on to the next stage. In this stage, the specialists have collated all of the data, looked at the scans very carefully and come to a decision about future treatment. It is at this stage that the patient and their loved ones are called in for the consultation. So it's important to arrive on time and to take a trusted person along with you. Don't make any assumptions about the treatment options that might be offered to you and be ready with your questions. It's best to have written those down before the consultation. At the consultation, the doctor may first start by assessing your health by asking you questions and examining you. Doctor will then explain exactly what is wrong with you and decide next steps with you. At this point, the doctor will pause and ask you, ask you if you have any questions. Hence, it is important for you to have written those down beforehand about what's important and what is it that you want to know. And then ask those questions towards the end of the consultation. What are the main objectives from the doctor's perspective about what has happened so far? The doctor wishes to know your symptom burden, the extent of the disease, what treatment choices might be appropriate for you and to help you deal emotionally with the diagnosis. What does symptom burden mean and what sort of symptoms may be giving pancreatic cancer patients problems and these include pain, jaundice, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, weight loss, loss of energy and of course anxiety and depression. Why is it important for the doctors to know the extent of the disease? And that is the first question to be answered is whether or not the cancer can be removed with surgery. For that to happen, it, there has to be no distant spread, no metastases, and no involvement of major blood vessels with the cancer. Pancreatic cancer staging is an accurate measure of the burden of cancer. Let's look into it. Just as a recap, in pancreatic cancer staging, there are three important parameters. One is the T stage, that is the size of the tumor. The other is N stage that is the nodal involvement as the lymph nodes and M stage metastasis whether or not the cancer is spread. So let's just look over here this is a cartoon of the pancreas I've drawn a, a cancer over here in the head of the pancreas this is the bowel tube coming down from the liver that you can see so T1 is less than two centimeters T2 would be greater than two but less than four centimeters T3 would be greater than 4 cm and T4 would involve an artery such as I'd, I've drawn over here. So as you can see if a tumor is touching this artery or this artery over here precluding surgery and that is T4. And 0 means none of these lymph nodes are involved and 1 means that between 1 and 3 lymph nodes are involved and 2 means that 4 or more of these lymph nodes are involved. M0 means no metastasis and M1 means metastasis commonly in the liver as I've drawn over here. Let's look at the amalgamated staging called stages 1 to 4. Stage 1 and stage 2 are early and these are represented by these numbers over here and they are drawn from these parameters. Stage 3 is advanced disease and stage 4 means that it has spread beyond the pancreas to other organs such as the liver. So the next stage is to decide on treatment choices and the treatment choices include surgery, chemotherapy, with or without radiotherapy and palliative care. So what are the important factors uh, on which treatment is based? And that is firstly the tumor burden. So the tumor burden may be low to moderate uh, without any metastatic spread, what we call stage one and two. In that case, surgery would be an option. High tumor burden with no metastatic spread, that would be stage three disease. And in this case, it is possible that patients may be offered treatment before surgery such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy and if patient has metastatic spread uh, which would be stage 4 cancer in, in this instance palliative treatment is provided that may include chemotherapy. The other important factor in deciding on treatment choice is patient fitness. If 
patients are fit they, and surgery is an option, they may have surgery. Patients may still be candidates for surgery but may need to improve their fitness and finally they may not be a candidate for surgery at all even if surgery were an option because they are just not fit enough. And lastly the fourth part of it is emotional well-being and it is common and normal to feel all of these emotions which include upset, being sad, anxious, depressed, worry about premature death, worry about suffering, worry about the unknown, worry about loved ones and worry about financial loss. So what might help in this situation? It's important that the patient seek help and the team looking after the patient concentrate on symptom control, also provide counselling, medication where appropriate and avenues where financial help and advice may be forthcoming. Patients may find solace in sharing their experience with other pancreatic cancer sufferers and there are a number of societies and charities which would facilitate that. It is helpful to know as much as possible but it is also okay to know just as much as you can cope with. In that case sometimes a patient may want to devolve the extent of the knowledge and sometimes the treatment decisions to a loved one. Alternative, ther alternative therapies such as aromatherapy, massage, Reiki and so on may be helpful in certain situations in relaxing and calming patients. Finally, all patients find it helpful prepare for the future not to be burdened by not having made important life decisions or to have important conversations with loved ones. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any comments, please do share.